I've been looking forward to this project for a while now and I can't wait to dig in with you in this first of three videos where we sculpt a Triceratops. In this first video, I'm going to introduce what I hope to accomplish with the series and then we're going to get into the aspects of design uh, and then end this first segment with uh, blocking out the main forms in clay. The second video will be a much more in-depth uh, tutorial on sculpting and building up the forms and really getting the character down. The third video will begin with going into the details uh, such as skin textures and things like that. And then we're going to document the mold making process and end the series with uh, the reveal of the final casting of which copies will be available to purchase. If you're interested, information for purchasing will be available with that third video. My name is Justin Harvilla and I am a sculptor living in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania and I am so excited to put up this first video and hopefully, uh, you know, get people into uh, the sculpture process and creativity in general the same way that I have by so many other content creators that I'm a huge fan of uh, on YouTube and other platforms. Um, this video series, as you can tell, is my is my first attempt at doing something like this. And as such, I really have to ask for your patience in things like angle and lighting and things like that as I learn them. But with Jurassic Park uh, Fallen Kingdom coming out uh, today, actually, when I'm recording this, uh, I just really wanted to get this first video out. Now, I've been recording video and things like that for the last week, uh, but even so, it's been it's been such a learning process, and uh, I've built new rigs, and I've got some plans for some other ones that will really do a much better job at capturing uh, the process and the lighting and everything like that. Uh, so if you can be patient with me for now, I promise things will get better. Now, this drawing uh, is just going to be very quick. Uh, I'm going through it and just kind of internalizing the uh, the forms of the skull. Uh, if I was doing a sculpture of a specific snake or another animal, I would probably not do the skull necessarily, although sometimes it does help. Um, and if I was doing a likeness of a person, I would definitely just draw that person. But because this is an animal that is extinct and we don't actually know exactly what it looked like, I want to go off of um, what we do know, which is the fossilized remains, in this case, the skull, instead of uh, kind of referencing other artists' interpretations. So once I have completed this drawing, uh, then we're going to move directly into uh, making the bulk forms. And the bulk forms are just about seeing the thing from a distance and knowing what it is. Here's the final illustration, and again, even though it's, you know, again, I'm no illustrator, it is good enough for what I need, and I encourage you to do the same no matter what skill level of drawing you're at before you start. Unfortunately, our goblin friend here has to go. Uh, the nice thing about the clay I use, which is uh, Le Beau Touche, which is made by Chavant, it is a non-sulfur plastiline clay. Uh, the nice thing about this is, is that it uh, melts with heat, it is not water-based, it won't dry out, and if it does start to get a little crumbly over time, you can melt it down and throw a fresh block in, and it comes right back to life. Also, Chavant clay and SP clays may be one of my favorite uh, smells ever, which sounds so strange, but I've had so many wonderful experiences with this clay sculpting with some of the most amazing people and having so much fun that it is forever etched into my mind as being just my one of my favorite smells. So if you sculpt with it, you know, don't worry, you'll you'll see what I mean. It's it's a very strange scent. Now, here uh, I have uh, some of the main forms going on, and I'm be I'm beginning to experiment with putting on the muscles and the different areas like that, and starting to give the character a little bit of personality. These lines are mapping lines, and it's just one of those things that when you're sculpting, one side will inevitably advance a little more than the other, or you'll like something on one side more than the other. And these lines are just quick measurements uh, that help me keep the symmetry. And balancing symmetry and asymmetry in a sculpture uh, is one of those things that you know it takes some time to learn, because if it's too symmetrical, when you see it, it will just look wrong. It looks really weird and you don't know why, but if there's 
too much asymmetry, it's the same thing. And again, in video two, we'll cover that in a little bit more detail. Now, once I'm pretty happy with where the design is going, I will take a loop tool like this or a popsicle stick and I will just kind of go over the entire piece and kind of like bring it all together and take out some of the lumpiness before moving on to uh, the next stage, which is going to be refining these main forms before we get into any of the detail. Nothing will start becoming detailed until we absolutely are satisfied with where the big major forms are going. I want to say thank you for uh, spending this time with me today. And I hope that you will join me again in the next videos of this series and in the future. I'm planning on doing a whole slew of these videos. But until then, I'm going to keep creating and learning, and I hope that you'll join me. See you next time.